Okay, today I want to do a real quick and simple video. We're going to take these crates from the uh, Click and Play set, Click and Play World Peacekeeper set, and we're going to make them a little more realistic. They're kind of cast in a yellowy plastic and washed with some kind of black ink, but they don't look that great, but they are a really good model. They have uh, some wood grain texture that pops up quite a bit. They open. Uh, they're, they're fairly small extra that come in these kits. But one of the reasons why I want to paint them more realistically is that this would also be a really good large crate for like D&D &D miniatures. So this is going to be a four step process but really straightforward. One is we're going to prime it. This is an off-the-shelf standard gray primer and the purpose behind this is to, if there's any oils, release agents, anything like that left on the plastics, um, wash these first. But this will kind of pickle the surface of the material. It etches into the plastic and it also gives a little bit of tooth for the paint that we're going to be putting on later to stick to. And then at the very end, we're going to, oh, and that's a gray primer. Uh, you can use anything, a gray, a black, a white. I mean, now there's even reds and green primers. But I find gray is the best neutral color to start with. It doesn't affect the colors that you're going to put on top of it as much. Sometimes white can be a little intense. Sometimes black primers or other dark primers like dark brown can bring the tones of what you're going to paint on top down and make the overall model appear darker. But once we're done, we're going to spray it with a clear acrylic spray paint. Um, make sure you use a flat or a satin. Satin will give a finish more like the original part. You see how there's a little bit of shine there, but not a lot. A flat will make it look much more like this D&D miniature that I showed before. Um, I find flats just look a lot more realistic in the end and makes it more consistent when you're mixing it in with things like this. You never want to use a gloss, it just makes it look plasticky and cheap. So once we primed it, I'm going to paint it with one of or both of these browns. Um, and then we'll go over the top of it with a shade or a wash. And I'll explain what these are when I get to them. The, the dot of color on top here is not actually a good representation of what this is going to do. This is going to cause the wood grain to pop out and also to make it look kind of dirty and worn. So keeping that in mind, one of the things that'll do is it'll darken down the tone that we're using. So. If I were to use this one, the lighter uh, woodland brown, in the end, it will look much closer to this darker harvest brown. And likewise, if I use this harvest brown, it'll end up a shade darker again. So we'll get to that in a minute. I'm going to step outside and spray these with the gray primer. And I'll come back and we'll start painting. 
Okay, I'm back from spray painting these. So they're even. I haven't bothered to paint the insides of them. You could if you want. Uh, I'm going to handle them a little differently. I've grabbed this dungeon gray, which is uh, somewhere between a black and a really dark gray. And I'm just going to line the interiors of these with that. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much about that being primed first because the insides of the boxes aren't going to get beat up when you throw these in your bag or if you know if your kids are playing with them whatever so I don't need to be as concerned about the uh, paint sticking very well on the inside and I'm leaving the last one undone for a comparison and because well I can't find the lid to this one so I'll leave that one until I do find it so I'm using MSP uh, Reaper paints, which are a modeling grade paint, but it's not necessary to use these types of paints. If you have something like this from the craft store, from Walmart, it'll work perfectly fine. This stuff is pretty thick, so put a couple drops in your tray and then put a little bit of water in it, mix it down, do several thin coats until you get it built up nicely. So I'm going to start with this lighter woodland brown make sure your paints are really well shaken I've done it off camera one small tip is before you dip your brush in the paint always get it wet now you don't want to have a bunch of water on it so wipe some of it off but if you dip a dry brush into your paints it will wick up in underneath the ferrule which is the metal piece that holds the holds the bristles in and what will happen is the material gets really hard to wash out and it slowly expands all your bristles and causes your brushes to fray out um, this is actually a good example of what happens if you don't so get your brush damp before you start painting take the lid off here so we're just gonna do a quick thin coat over the whole thing don't worry about getting it perfect on the first try uh, this paint has pretty good coverage so it probably will anyways but two thin coats or three thin coats are always better than one thick coat one of the reasons for that is the paint will settle into your details and actually remove some of the details. It will smooth them out basically. Now I know this is a very shocking color at the moment. Very intense. But the washes that we're going to do in a second will take that down. When things have grain like this or heavy, heavy texture, try to paint with the grain. It'll help a little bit. And also watch for pooling in little corners like this. If you start to get your paint pooling in there, just kind of pick some up with a somewhat dry brush and move it somewhere else. Try your best not to stick a finger in the paint as you're moving it around. It can get pretty hard, especially when you're painting an entire object a solid color like this. One thing that can help, not necessarily so much with this particular shape, is sticking them to the top of a uh, wine cork or an old rattle can lid with some blue tack, the poster tack. You can get it off of stores for holding holding papers onto the wall. Oops. Okay, I got a few spots where I had fingerprints, but it's okay. This is the first coat. It may look like it's completely covered, but 
uh, trust me, the results will be a lot better if you go ahead and put a second coat over it anyways. Acrylic paints do dry fairly quickly, so you want to work fairly quickly in order to uh, not waste your paints. There is a workaround for that called a wet palette, which is going to be a subject for a different video. And I got a piece of plastic from 3D printing in it. One of the hazards of having a multi-purpose workshop. Alright, and we're just going to do this under edge of the lid all the way around. Really lightly. I'm not going to worry about getting inside of it because that's going to be painted with that dungeon gray that I grabbed. Okay, good enough for a first coat. I'm going to repeat that on the second crate and come back. Okay, so off camera, I put on a second coat. I also painted the interiors. It's still a little damp in there, but interiors are dark. Already it looks quite a bit better than the uh, now sickly green looking plastic by comparison. Uh, before we get to putting the shades on it to make the grain pop out, there are some nail heads on here. So what I'm going to do is take a smaller brush, get it wet, and I'm taking weathered stone any gray or silver will work fine for this. Just pick it up a small amount of the paint and we're just going to touch the top of each nail head and throw our paintbrush apparently. Touch. Okay, I made a little bit of a mistake on that one, but not a big deal. Immediately now they stand out. And we don't want to we're not going to worry about the edges because the the uh, wash that we're going to use will soak up to the edges of them and kind of create a shadow around them. So we're going to repeat that for all sides in the lid. I am again going to jump forward because that would be a bit tedious to show. Okay. So now that I've finished painting all the nail heads, now we're going to move on to washes. Now these are going to be the one thing that if you're not into wargaming or like model tanks, that kind of thing, you may not have heard of before. So these aren't paints, at least not in the way that you normally think of them. Uh, these are made by Citadel Games Workshop. Uh, they don't normally come in these bottles. I rebottle them into these. They come in a plastic pot. but a shade is basically inks thinned down in some kind of suspension medium that has a very high flow rate. It doesn't go on like paint. It goes on like water. And it flows into corners and crevices and darkens them. So the reason I have these three out, and I'm only going to use the center one and maybe this one in this project, is that these are basically the three shades. Uh, that you would normally use for this type of thing. There are some colored ones as well, and various companies have their own versions of this. You can make your own. I'm not going to go into that right now. That's a complicated subject for another video. But uh, most game shops or better hobby shops will have something like this. The Seraphim Sepia here, it's uh, a very, very light tan that uh, like if you paint it over white it makes like a aged parchment or like coffee stain type color Agrax Earthshade is a brown and it does good shading on like rocks and actually I have an example of what the Earthshade was used on up here This 40K Wolf Earthshade is dropped onto him to make all the uh, the fur texture stand out. 
before I started layering up with these darker browns. And then Nolan Oil is a black. And this provides the most contrast and it basically emulates shadows. But we're going to take the Agrax Earth Shade and wash the entire box with it. These you want to make sure they're shaken well because they separate fairly quickly. But you also don't want to shake them too violently because they foam a little bit. Whoops. Use a little bit more than normal because, like I said, this is not a paint. Actually, me getting it on my finger here is good. As you can see, it is basically flowing into my fingerprint. It's very, very thin. It can be pushed around easily. As always, make sure your brush is wet first before dipping it in. I'll start with this lid as an example. We're going to take it. We have a fairly heavy drop on it. I'm going to quickly wipe. And we want to spread it out and make sure that it doesn't pool too much, although sometimes pooling in the corners can be good. Again, as your brush dries out a little bit, you can go back and kind of pick up some of it from the corners where it's a little heavy and spread it to areas where it's not. Whoops. Now this stuff, once it starts to dry, you don't want to attempt to go back over it until it's fully dry. Um, what will happen is your brush will pick, up, pick it up off the paint and leave a weird dry spot. So currently it's shiny, but as, that, as it dries out, it'll kind of seep in a little bit and ends up with a nice texture. So keep them going. We're going to do the box. Same thing. You want to make sure you get everything as evenly as possible because it does leave uh, one thing to watch out for is bubbles. If you see bubbles, kind of stab at them with your brush and pop them. A bubble will leave a void where you don't have any of the ink sitting. It will look very strange afterwards and be a little bit harder to fix. A little bit pooling in corners is not necessarily a bad thing. It kind of generates shadows. In an object that had a more specific orientation, uh, you can actually use this to a, your advantage by actually painting the undersides of things with this wash and using less or none or a lighter shade on the top sides of things and that will actually increase the effects of shadows. But in these, in the case of these boxes, I'm not going to worry about that because they're going to end up on the table in any random orientation. So creating artificial light and shadow in this case is probably not really beneficial. All right, so we got a little bit of bleed over from where the two corners met. So I'm going to pick some of that up, move it up to the top. If you find you need to pick some up and you don't 
have anywhere to push it around, just kind of wipe it off on your skin and then go back and dab it out of the places where you have a little excess. Okay, I'll set that aside. I'll do the other box. Oh, see that we ended up with a run. That run came over the side. I'm going to pick that up real quick before it dries in place. All right, I think that looks okay. Another thing to be aware of with this is to watch your fingerprints again. Your fingers will pick this stuff off fairly easily. So I did the Agrax Earthshade wash on this box to its entirety, and I went back and I touched up a few more spots where it hadn't quite settled in nice enough. And this stuff, you do want to let it completely dry before you go back and try to touch it up, or you'll end up uh, reactivating and lifting off your previous layer. But I left this one undone so that you could see side by side this effect. It is uh, pretty subtle, but it makes a huge difference. Alright, so I'm going to complete this one, and then we're going to come back and clear coat them. So I just took these out and painted them, or I painted this one with the clear coat. And I didn't record it because it's a clear coat. There's really nothing to see. You can't tell on camera like how I'm putting it down. So this one has not yet been painted. This one has with the clear coat. And you can barely tell the difference. There's just a touch more I don't want to say shininess but like the way the light reacts to it. it's a little different on this one and this is what you want this is what you're going for when you clear coat a miniature when you're spraying it on you don't want to get a wet looking layer you want to stop right at that point where you can see that the spray has changed the surface but before it looks like it started to build up and look damp what will happen if you spray too much on in a single round, you will end up with frosting. So it will look fine and then as it starts to dry, the surface will go hazy and, for lack of a better term, look blurry. Like a layer of frost or ice has formed over it. Now, the part is not destroyed if this happens. There is a simple fix, but you will have to have something on hand that most people probably don't have. I have had some luck with giving it 48 hours to re-dry and then spraying it with like a satin, just a really light dusting of a satin uh, clear coat, and then going back and doing a light dusting of a matte again after 48 hours. But that that takes a long time. Um, I have been able to fix them within a couple hours just letting them dry enough to where it feels safe and then using matte medium acrylic matte medium um, this stuff so what this is it's essentially the exact same thing that these types of paints are made out of except it does not have any pigments in it and being a matte, it'll provide that flat texture. So what you'll do is as soon as this is dry enough to work with, within about an hour, if you notice the frosting, take a regular brush, use this like paint, and paint it over the entire surface of the model. Once it dries, it'll look like this again. So, for final comparison here, the lid fits a little bit tighter now with the extra thickness of the paint, but that's not a bad thing. The lids were falling off, hence why I'm missing this one. Alright, I'll clear coat that one off camera, but effectively we're done here. Um, I'm going to be point painting some more miniatures in the future as well as doing some repaints on some G.I. Joe sized figures three and a 
three and three quarters or I forget the exact scale. For instance, these two dogs, which are for, one's from the click and play kit, one's from the, um, uh, I forget the other name. Dogs are painted with like a quick stamping paint process. So like their gear that's on them leaves something to be desired. The dog itself is actually not painted that bad, other than the fact that his teeth are painted on his lip down here. But I like to go in and uh, repaint all this equipment, get the buckles across his stomach actually correctly painted, and have this not look like, well, like somebody dumped paint on his gear. <laughs> 